So I hinted about silhouettes in my last two videos, and I wanted to go a little bit further into that very subject matter in this video. So hang on. Howdy, howdy, y'all. This is Claire Lawrence, and I thought I would hit on silhouettes a little bit more um, using my favorite subject matter, horses. And these are a bunch of photographs I took at a Frisian expedition, oh, many years ago. Actually, I think I took 5,000 photos, just a few. Uh, but it's a good area to, for me, um, uh, for reference photos for future drawings and projects and things like that. And so it was a good library to pull from to talk about this. So what makes a good silhouette? I mean, obviously this photo here, this is one of my favorite photos that I have taken from that whole journey. But would it make a good silhouette? And silhouette meaning a solid um, shape that represents the image, whether it's a person, animal, or, or thing. So in this particular case, would this make a good silhouette? Meaning just taking the shape out of the background. Or would this... Or with this or with this so I've got this first line up here of pretty much what you could call portraits meaning uh, focus on the face area and then these guys here are more of action type shots or full bo or full body uh, blah, blah. sorry about my tongue there full body shots as well well that's almost full body partially Okay, so back to the portraits. So if we were to do a silhouette of only the shape and go very much on the outside, his nose and jawline and this side of the face here would be hidden in this, in this particular shape. It almost makes a type of a, a triangular shape. So no, this would not make a good portrait. Uh, um, a good silhouette. <laughs> Me and the kids just got through goofing off and my tongue is seriously on the tight side. So it would not make a good silhouette. It would make a great portrait, but not a good silhouette. Now this guy here, okay, I like this. This particular stallion and I got along really well. He's, his name was Sam and they were prepping him up for a show and I got to hang around with Sam a lot. So that's why I had to talk about Sam just a little bit. But because of it coming in from the back uh, back view going towards the front You wonder it's like is this gonna work out? But the area where his hindquarters is and then the bend of his neck and a nice shape of his head that if you took that shape and This shape here remove the background would it resemble a good profile? It might it depends on how you use it. So this is one of those that is probably depending on the situation. So it's a little bit on the gray side. Definitely the headshot is a really nice profile, but it's the, it's the butt area that kind of can cause you a little bit of trouble. Now you could remove said butt and continue the line of the neck out if you wanted to and create the rest of the profile. That would work, that would be a way to work on it. But if you also created a background blend and had it so that the butt in the neck was here and he was literally at the edge of the photo at the edge of your image and then you had a nice blend out here it would still pull off pretty well um so i say it depends on the application and how you're going to use it okay so this guy here is the same kind of situation he's got a whole lot of hair going on here nice arc to the neck so that is really really pretty as far as showing a lot of grace a lot of movement a lot of characteristic even the uh the shoulder and the uh, the leg starting to come out here at a nice angle so a lot of good lines but the hair does make for connecting the head together with the body so that does make it difficult now if you were to remove the hair create your line with your shape and stuff, draw in your hair loosely, then yes, this could work out really well. So I guess I'm showing you three example or four examples that are kind of on the iffy side. This one here, even though how much I love this shot, 
it would not make a good profile. Would it make a great portrait? Absolutely. But profile, not so much. But let me pull this guy in because it is, since it is a three quarter shot. Um, all right, so this is a good example. Great arc to the neck. The head's kind of curved in a little bit. So it creates this nice angle and shape. And then you got the profile here, shoulder action here. And because it's being a black horse, you can almost see the profile or the silhouette in it. Um, so yes, this would make a really great uh, silhouette image. So keep that in mind as far as comparison with these guys here that I showed. I should have had a, a, a good portrait shot that would work as a silhouette. But I am, instead I have two grays and two nose. But it gives you a good example of how to make a gray area work with these two particular ones here. And then this one here, if we had it just as here, it would be more of a profile. Uh, or I'm sorry, a portrait shot. And that would definitely work in this case. All right. So let's get back to the action shots. So I'm going to scan over these really quickly before I start talking about them. Now this is a show environment, so all these people are at the top of their game, as well as the horses too. So these are a good example of really good movement, good collection and all that kind of stuff. So it's 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 fine class of action shots. Okay, so let's see. Here's a good example of two images here. So this one here has got a very clear action. There's some air movement, meaning we got three out of four of the legs that are uh, in the air. Uh, nice collection, nice lines here, even good action with the tail. So yes, this would make a really good candidate for a nice, nice, nice uh, silhouette shot. Uh, this one here has, you know, real nice lines in here. Nice collection with the, the head and stuff. However, the head and the neck get lost together. The leg here and the leg over here gets a little confusing as far as what's going on when you take the background element out and you start seeing it as a solid shape. So this one would not work as, as well as a silhouette. It would work great for a nice, you know, portrait or painting wise that could show all the shadows and, and gradations and stuff but just not as a silhouette so this one here whoops sorry about the camera okay so again a lot of nice uh leg movement here this little leg here does look a little bit now granny he's nice and collected he's got a nice gait to him uh, he's, you can tell he's very light on his feet and stuff like that, but because of this particular position of the leg, it might get a little like, a little iffy looking, but it would still pull off well. You just got to be really, really clear about the shapes and stuff like that. So be mindful of your shapes when you draw them on your silhouettes and to be able to pull it off. So I would always, always focus on the shapes of the body first before I mess with any kind of hair. Uh, cause hair is almost superficial. It does show movement, but if the structure is not there and not sh making sense, this, your silhouette's not going to make sense. I don't care how glorious you are with your hair. Okay. And this one here, this is a very classic kind of maneuver in this particular type of writing style. So for individuals who do do this kind of writing style, this would be recognizable very quickly, uh, even in silhouette form. However, if you do not draw this correctly in your silhouette form here, things will get me messed up. So you need to follow the body lines very, very closely in order to get a very recognizable um, gait and action movement. So it is, it is clean, it's recognizable, but it's tricky because you can't mess up the legs. So I hope, now granted, I realize that most of you, you wouldn't be doing horses. You might be doing kids or, you know, plants or something like that, or cats. Um, 
but the same thing applies when you have an image that's like easily recognizable and without the background and just shape only then you've got something that works well if it is closed up tight with the body it's not going to work with as a silhouette but when you do have separation in in the body area with the background that's where your silhouette areas will show up the best now the next step that i'm going to do is i'm going to take one of these images and start drawing lines and show you how i do my silhouettes or one of the ways that i do my silhouettes um for the most part right now i've been pulling them in on procreate and drawing my lines but how I used to do them uh, with a Sharpie marker on paper uh, might help you out really quickly. So I'm going to get set up and get started on that next. Okay, so my trick for creating silhouettes is actually pretty simple. I'm sorry, but uh, my hubby has to do mowing because even though it is January in Texas, uh, we did get some rain recently and a little bit warmer temps and the grass is like, woohoo! So, yeah, he's got to do a little bit of mowing. I can't believe this, but it happens. Okay, so my trick for doing silhouettes, either one, you can do it in Procreate and literally draw your lines, or two, if you want to stick with uh, paper, just use a Sharpie. Um, I usually get a fine point, and then what I do is I go over the outside line and literally draw in the line on top of my photo print. Now, if this is a photograph you want to keep, make a copy of it. And what happens is, is with the Sharpie, oh, and I would definitely encourage you to have uh, a piece of cardboard or uh, cardstock under here, something substantial because it will bleed through this technique. So be mindful of that. Or like an old catalog or something you're not worried about it, it bleeding onto. But literally, we're gonna be drawing a line on top of it. Let's see if I can do this while still holding the camera. So like if I was going to trace this step or this uh, gate here, which I'm not doing very well because I'm doing the camera and looking through the camera at the same time. So let's just pretend here. Oh, this is hard. Okay. When you flip it over, you'll see the gate and the couple of lines that I drew really crappy. So that works out pretty well. Well, in this case, I drew the outline around the horse, and I'm not worried about my lines. There's just an indication of where the hair went. Um, I went ahead, and I, it was important for me to keep the line moving, so I went through that. But even though this bump represents the eye, I went ahead and did the second line. And this is just to create a pattern so that you can transfer this later to whatever you want to paint. So basically, this is about creating a silhouette pattern. So. Create the line, finish out the jawline because I almost always do. Work on my uh, area here, the shoulder, uh, go into the leg. I finished out the leg here, even though this whole area would be solid, but it helps me see the line while I'm drawing it and go through this way, okay? So that helps me out a lot. I wasn't focused too much on the hair as much, but I wanted to make sure that I knew where the hoof was first because that indicates where how the feet line up with the leg. So again, if you're working with an um, animal person or something like that, they've got a lot of hair, Work, figure out the shape first, hair second. Because the hair makes sense when the shape makes sense. If you do reverse, you can end up with really weird shapes. Um, and so that's really, really important. Kind of helps with it being on the side so you can see what I'm talking about. Okay. So that's basically my silhouette, and I just knocked, nixed out the uh, rider in this case. It looks like he's just prancing around in a field, and I can apply this to whatever I want. And if you still need to see the silhouette, as far as like it being a solid shape, you know, do something like this in here, and you'll get an idea of what it looks like for you. Like that. Okay, and what you can do is either you can transfer this line drawing, I uh, mean the outline shape, to uh, tracing paper, or you can use this as your pattern to put on top of, let's say this is your painting that you've gotten in, and you've got some, uh, let's see, here's, here's, here's sun, there's some little rays coming off the sun, here's like, you know, a little grassy slope, 
Here, we're gonna do a little Christmas tree. My doodles. So this is your image right here, as far as a painting wise. You get a sheet of um, carbon paper or transfer paper. Put this on top of it. Figure out where you wanna position it. Get a ballpoint pen. Oh, I would also recommend putting like two little pieces of like uh, painter's tape on here on one edge. So that way when uh, you get your ballpoint pen and you go over this line and you think you've gotten all of it, before you take this off, open it up hinge wise and look and make sure that your entire image is transferred. If it's not, you haven't lost your position. You can just flip this back out. If I can grab it flip it back over because you still got your hinge in place and finish out the lines that you missed. So that's an easy way to do it. And this works whether it's watercolor, alcohol ink, resin work, whatever, or acrylic painting and stuff, stuff like that. So easy little trip um, or trick to apply silhouettes to, or even drawings. If you want to get a little bit more particular on drawings and you want to do, um, a kid's portrait let's say for example uh, it doesn't have to be a silhouette uh, you can use the sharpie marker uh, technique really easily and just go in more details like if you wanted to keep um, let's say lines here you wanted to indicate shadows gently here you can do some lines again I'm doing this while I've got the camera in my hands things like that. I'm going to do this line. That'll help. Very distinctive shape there. Okay. And so you get that shape and it transfers pretty easily. So that's how you can also go to the next level and start getting shadows and things too. So that's it for now. So until then, uh, hit that like button, hit the subscribe button. But definitely hit the bell to get notified next time I put a video up because you never know what I'm going to do next. Later, y'all.